Nice to see him. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Well, we're going to start off this next session. I'm Professor Mark Troen, and I teach in the Masters of Real Estate Development and Urbanism program at the university. And every year, we actually have a research survey that we conduct. And this is our fifth year for the Real Estate Research Survey. And it's composed of a team of students, those are the ones who are over to my left, who have, in fact, chosen the topic and have done the work for us. But before we start on our research survey, I want to give a nice shout out to John Burns Real Estate Consulting. They are, in fact, our sponsor and faculty and board advisor for this year's survey. And two of the colleagues that we have, in fact, Leslie Deutsch is standing over to my right. She's the principal of John Burns Real Estate Consulting. She and her colleague, Devin Bachman, were essential in helping the students and the team review and analyze the data. In addition, they've written an excellent book with John Burns called Big Shifts Ahead. It really talks about the demographics in our society and what's coming up next. So today, we're giving you a brief presentation that will tell you what the respondents, you in the audience, said for our fifth annual survey. And this is our agenda. We'll start off with our market review. And then the topics that the students chose about where we live, the impact of migration, exploring diversity, and then we'll summarize it all together. So first, let's start off with Natalia Vergara. She's going to review what the respondents said that their sentiments were for this year's South Florida real estate market. Natalia. Thank you, Professor. Check one, two. Oh, thank you, Professor Trone. I'd like to start off by saying that this year, the survey results showed significant differences compared to last year's survey starting right off with the fact that more respondents this year are fearful of a coming recession than they have been in any of the past four years. With that said, expansion is still the favored sentiment overall, with respondents believing that Palm Beach County is the best position for expansion in 2023. Now, last year, respondents were very optimistic about values continuing to rise in the year to come, with multifamily and industrial predicted to perform best in 2022. This year, we have seen a shift. More respondents relatively to last year answered that they believe that prices will stay neutral or go down, uh, even though uh, values going up is still the predominant sentiment overall. We've also seen a shift whereby healthcare and medical assets, as well as senior housing assets, have overtaken multifamily and industrial in terms of what is predicted to perform best in the year to come. And in line with last year's positive sentiments that values would continue to go up, respondents from last year's survey believed that it was an optimal time to buy across most asset types. This year, we do see more hesitation as respondents believe that it is the optimal time to hold assets. The only categories where this is not the case is in medical office where most respondents still believe it's an optimal time to buy and in office assets where people may be giving in and believe that it's time to sell. Access to debt has risen to be the top factor impacting market values for commercial real estate today. It has quickly risen up the list. In 2021, it was number seven. Last year, it rose to number four. And of course, this year, it's at the very top of the list, uh, showing the very real concern with access to capital in today's market. And parallel with that concern is, of course, the cost of that capital. And we have seen both of these concerns rise on the list of factors that determine investor behavior. And so, and they've risen to number two and three, as you can see on the board here. And so even though concerns have risen on the list, we still see a positive sentiment on the top of the list. And that is that most respondents believe that demand for commercial real estate will continue to outpace supply and that rents and asset values will continue to increase. Another major shift that we've seen is that last year, the leading response in terms of what was dictating investor behavior was the belief that commercial real estate is underpriced. That, as you can see on the board, has dropped to dead last on the list today. And even though very few respondents believe that commercial real estate is underpriced, we see from the survey that investors are still expecting most of their returns to come from asset appreciation at exit. So to us, that further cements the belief that demand is going to remain strong across several asset types here in South Florida, 
And even though we are facing uh, issues with access to capital and the cost of that capital, we are still well positioned for expansion in 2023. Great, thank you, Natalia. Now we're gonna to turn to Amanda Brown, and she's gonna tell us why the team chose to look at where and why we live. As a team, as a team, we wanted to see what areas people were interested in and what factors they found important. When asking respondents what area they would prefer to live between urban, suburban, or suburban areas, suburban areas were the most attractive. A suburban area would be described as an area with a suburban location blended with urban amenities and lifestyle. 42% of people found suburban areas the most attractive. 37% of people found urban areas attractive, and 21% of people found suburban areas attractive. An example of an urban area would be downtown Miami, an example of a suburban area would be Kendall, and an example of a suburban area would be Coral Gables. When we asked respondents what they prioritized when purchasing a home, safety was the number one driving factor. Other factors in order of importance according to respondents were privacy in your home, access to employment, access to medical services, public school quality, and walkability. Great, thank you very much, Amanda. Now we turn to Andres Pretel. Tell us why the team was looking at migration factors and how it may impact investment. Thank you, Professor. With this migration section, we wanted to inquire why are people moving to Miami and if they will continue to move in a post-pandemic environment, which clearly had an accelerator effect on the migration trends towards South Florida. According to our findings, in a post-pandemic environment, people will continue to move to Miami and net migration will increase. The greatest investor demand will come from domestic investors within the United States, including those from the West Coast and from the Northeast. Additionally, we have concluded that the main drivers behind this migration include, in the short term, an immediate better quality of life for residents, and in the long term, the business relocation dynamics that are set in Miami as a finance and tech hub in the country. On the other hand, one of the main risks, according to our respondents, is the lack of a public massive transport system in the city of Miami, which should remain as a top concern for our public authorities. Thank you, Andres. And it's interesting that the earlier panel, of course, focused on that, and our survey respondents sought that as a key problem and concern. So lastly, but not least, let's go to Nick Levin. And Nick's going to talk to us and tell us why the team looked at employment and the issue of diversity. We as a team found that diversity in the workplace is at the forefront of the minds of people in the labor force. And we wanted to uncover how aspirational this is versus how much is it actually getting practiced. But before we get into who is getting hired, it's important to note that 77% of respondents reported that their company currently reflects the diversity of South Florida. In order to maintain this in an uncertain market, companies need to either retain their current employees or continue to hire diverse applicants. Their survey showed that 56% of respondents reported that their company increased in size post-pandemic, while a noteworthy 38% of respondents reported that their company became more diverse. Both of these were the result of pandemic-induced migration, which the survey showed as having a positive impact on migration. 49% of respondents reported that they can see and feel this positive impact on diversity in their workplace. We believe no one was talking, thinking, or researching about this much 10 years ago, and there is a substantial amount of work to be done, but again, our initial findings did show that greater than a third, almost 40% of the respondents reported that their company is currently becoming more diverse. So we believe that this is a topic you will continue to see in the headlines and a topic that does need a lot more research. Thank you. Great, thank you, Nick. So here are our key findings. In sum, we know market confidence has wavered, but we're still in an expansion mode here in South Florida, with access to debt and capital being, of course, a primary concern. Suburban areas seem to be favored, and I think will continue to be so. And what's interesting, where people live, they prioritize safety and privacy, in addition to looking at all the other factors in their home buying issues and renting. So in our post-pandemic environment, migration is still our benefit here. It's certainly gonna help our South Florida market. And if you will see it, actually, not only are they coming from all over the US, but that's gonna help us look at the issues of diversity and increased employment in the workplace for the years to come. So finally, let me again give a shout out to our team. These are the leaders of our future, and please go up and introduce yourself to them during the next networking break. I think you wanna meet them and learn from them.
Thank you. I also want to put, uh, also note that we had a great team of faculty and board member advisors. So over there in the dark on my right, we have Leslie Deutsch. She's from John Burns Real Estate Consulting. Please just wave a hand so they know that's Leslie, of course. And then next to her is Tim Hernandez. He is on the faculty, teaches with me in the MRED program, and is a principal of New Urban Communities. And next to him is Sam Herrera. Sam last stood on this stage actually back in 2020. And he and his team presented the real estate research findings back then. He now is an associate at 3650 REIT. So I put up this slide. It's going to stay up there for just a minute or so. If you want to aim your cameras at the QR code, you can get a copy of this presentation and be able to also register for the full report when it is available. And finally, I'd like to mention our advisory board at the MRED program is comprised of great leaders in our global community, and they have a really keen interest and engagement with our students and everybody else in real estate. So I want to mention Jay Masserman, the current chairman of our advisory board. He's been actively involved since 2013 and has tirely, tirelessly promoted our program, the students, this conference, and the university as a whole. He served on our executive committee as our sponsorship chair, as a nominating committee, even participated in our Shark Tank panel, and as a panel juror. He's mentored countless students and offered internships and actually hired our graduates. So all of these contributions of time and energy to find an outstanding board chairman, he embodies all of them with a smile and quit wit. So from our MRED team, the board, and everybody at the university, please join me in thanking Jay for his service. So thank you for letting us present to you, and I think at this time, should I turn it to you or to... All right, so Andrea is back on stage. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen.